back at uh, Troops in Contact. Um, at times, uh, this can be intellectually exhausting, but that's balanced with um, no small amount of satisfaction at at least hoping that the end result of all this will at least capture uh, some of my own experience and of course the experiences of um, mm, those who have I guess fought in in conflicts and fought in combat in the last 15 years or generally the again widening out to the generally uh, generally the contemporary um, period anyways um, <clears throat> important uh, changes um, important changes changes that that needed to be made uh, clarified um, one thing that uh, is getting worked into the rules is um, basically the the widest possible options for players to use different types of fires. So in area fire like this uh, assault team, uh, assault fire team, or this heavy machine gun, or this assault rifle team, uh, fire team, these area firers, of course they primarily employ area fires um, against area targets, but they will also have the ability to um, conduct area fires against point targets and point fires against point targets. Um, and then point fires like tanks, uh, armored infantry fighting vehicles, um, will, uh, well, they will fire point fires only. They don't employ uh, area fires. Uh, well, of course, coaxial machine guns and, and, and some weapons, but main tank guns obviously would only be point fires. Um, but of course, these vehicles uh, carry weapon systems that that can uh, <clears throat> that can uh, produce area fires against area targets and point targets. So yes, a lot of different uh, I guess matchups between fires, targets, and types of fires. But the but the one thing to highlight here that's going to be um, a little different, I think. Now, um, basically, here, here's a good example. If this Red 4 team were up here in the woods and able to observe the Blue 4 team here, each of them are area uh, they are area units, so they so they are area targets to each other. They employ area fires, but what will be possible is for the player to choose to have, for example, the the blue four rifle fire team may employ point fire against an area target. And basically, I mean, the one thing that's different, I guess the major thing that's different is that the area firer, well, yeah, the area unit that's firing will employ, will go through the procedure for point fires. No, 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 back up. They will go through the procedure for area fire. Oh, I, haven't, I guess I haven't made up my mind about that. 
what I was doing is the the unit will go through the procedure for area fire and if they produce any casualty then it's just just one casualty on the target so it doesn't matter if it's a C1, 2, 3, 4, 5 result it's one casualty against the the target unit hmm but now I'm wondering if they shouldn't roll on the not roll I wonder if they shouldn't follow the proceed. Oh, of course they should fire. That was wrong. I'm gonna change that already. Um, they should follow the procedure for. Um, uh, point fire. And obviously, any K result is uh, treated as. Uh, a C1. The difference here is that the fire's skill will be brought into the, the equation basically. Okay. Um, there were other little changes, um, but I am going to keep going, move ahead, and um, see what happens now. So it's the start of the uh, third period of the second cycle. Uh, it is the lime green or third cycle. So we, both players look and remove all of the, um, the period markers that correspond to the current period. That's these. Uh, here's another one. All right, so you'll notice um, these are marked with the gray uh, period markers that are underneath that you can see from to the side there you can see the side the corner right there you can see the corner right there they are still in the process of an action so they're not generally available to the player so I'm figured out if that's available or generally available um, I don't know still working through is these concepts kind of solidify, right? Okay, so the uh, red four player is the is the situation attacker um, and goes first, no choice. Okay, um, they're basically not acting. It's kind of not much. They can re they can react, but not act during this period. Uh, during this action period. Okay. Oh, so here we go. So let's resolve this now. One change here is that uh, there aren't going to be any odd CF markers anymore. Uh, went ahead and said, where am I going? Where am I going? I'm going to the CRT. Um, so this was five um, firepower um, five is right between a four firepower column and a six firepower column so now we're gonna round up and so there won't, won't, won't be when the player went to put when the blue player well I guess whoever placed it when the when the red player placed the five CF on the target hex at the end of some blue player fire, um, it would now, <clears throat> it would be rounded at that time to the, um, to the appropriate uh, column. So in this case, it would be the six, there we go. So there. Um, like that. Okay, so let's go and see here. So they, were, so I think they started the situation with one casually down one man. Um, so let's first see how the expanded sequence of play is shaping up. So we should be able to. So basically, red player is choosing to resolve a combat hex. In other words, the red four player is finding out what happened 
in this, because we just removed the period marker showing that whatever happened in the, in the last one, two, three, or four um, periods, we're going to find out it's a player action. So red, red player is you know, using his action to find this out. But that's what it is. Um, that was the other huge change from before. I now have, uh, I believe I figured out a way, and I'll go over, oh, actually I'm not sure it's even going to come up in this little play test here, so maybe I'll just talk about it separately later. I found out a way um, to have my delayed results even for point fires, and it's funny because I wasn't actually look. I mean, I had resigned myself to having to uh, resolve point fires at the point at the time of fire but I really wasn't happy with that I, I really like the delayed results um, and when I was looking at some when I was looking at the nature of point fires um, versus area fires doing some reading as well which I'll talk about anyways it worked out that oh when I when I changed around the Kind of the model for point fires it allowed for delayed results so that's good okay so we go to our expanded sequence of play to see okay player may check combat resolution resolve a cf hex or cf unit this is obviously a cf hex um cf hex would be for area fire a cf unit would be for point fires Although I'm still not sure how I'm going to distinguish that. Huh, well actually, well, if it's a point target, if it were, if it were a BMP, no, no, it would, it would be unclear whether the the original fire was point fire area fire. Okay, I'm gonna have to work on that. Not sure how I'm gonna deal with that, but in this case, we know it was uh, we knew it was area fire. Um, okay, resolving a CF is a player action, but does not cost action points and does not result in a PM a period marker. This is this is still true. Player may only resolve CF if unit or units not currently marked PM. That's true. The PM was removed at the start of this action period. Okay, so it's set right now. It just says roll, roll ooh, 98. That's definitely going to be nothing. But roll percentage dice. If resolving point fire, blah, 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 blah. If resolving area fire, that's us. Check unit. Will times uh, teamwork adjust right one column if fail? All right, so obviously a roll of 98, they're going to fail. But let's go through that real quickly again. So we look at our units. Um, so again, we look, red player looks and says this is unit 113. And unit 113 is a, is a 666 type. So its will is 6 and its... Uh, Teamwork is six, so six times six is a base percentage uh, of thirty-six. Call this the um, react to fire or defensive check, whatever you want to call it. It's the check that the unit will go through when resolving fire against it. So it's will times teamwork. Six times six, thirty-six is the base. That's true for actually all the six six sixes on the board, which in fact in this case is all the red forces. But uh, you still want to check the individual unit because each individual unit has unique modifiers to to each category: skill, will, teamwork. So unit one one three has a will modifier of six and a teamwork modifier of minus seven for a net minus one. Right. So the so the net minus one is applied to the base type thirty six for thirty five. So. Unit 113 would have to roll a 35 or less to successfully react to fire. It rolled way over that at 98. So what we do is we're going to bump it up one column on the CRT. So instead of resolving on the six column, now we're up on the eight column. But it doesn't really matter because 98 is way high and no effect. 
but let's go back to our sequence of play. So, so check unit, will times teamwork, we did that. They failed and their reactive fire check, so we just up one column, check for cover. They're actually in the woods, so let's do this. Uh, the cover, oh. Is it cover or is it cover and concealment? No, I think it's just cover, okay. Check cover for no effect. Um, so let's do that. Um, I think it's like 20 or something like that for the woods here. Um, it is 20. Okay, so the woods provide 20% cover. Um, that means that a roll of 20 or less would be would be no effect. Um, and their posture is up, which is no adjustment. So the unit itself is in an up posture. They were they were they were walking in the woods when they were fired upon. Is is the narrative here? They were walking through the edge of the woods here. They were fired upon. So, but it was they're very, very lucky with a roll of 98 that it should again be no effect, but let's finish our so um, so yeah, that was check cover for no effect. Um, doesn't matter, mark casualties as appropriate. We didn't have any casualties from the CRT. Area target, so here we go, area target, this is an area target, is immediately DP, that's down posture, if, if not already, well, they're, they were up. So they go, they immediately go down, and they are FC, and they are full cover there, and remove the CF. Okay, so that was the red player's action. Uh, and the effect of that is that these guys, they were very lucky to survive the fire, and now they should, having gone to ground and, you know, down completely, uh, they should probably be no longer visible to any of the blue four units there. Okay. So action per, um, goes back to blue player, and now blue player probably can't see anything. Um, these guys are actually down. There's a contour line here. So they are on the uh, down side of that contour line. They're not visible. These guys are also in this little draw here. So they are down on the, uh, on the far side of a... Uh, contour line, so they're not visible. So let's see if the, let's see if the machine gun, the heavy machine gun can see these guys, I doubt it, but um, I wonder if players should have to declare that or not. I'm inclined to go with no, I don't want to go to the to the point of you know you have to declare it then check and if you and if your fire is not valid you you're penalized for modern for contemporary combat at this scale and scope I'm I'm inclined to not go that way so for now I'm just going to continue on and not consider you know what happens if you really can't see the target but let's just figure out can the machine gun can the heavy machine gun team here in the wood line observe across this, you know, so that the train's going to generally go down and then up to this wood line. All right, let's figure out by observation, through observation, can he see or not? Okay, <clears throat> so again, heavy machine gun starts with a naked eye observation allowance of 20. Um, And I think I was going with intervening hexes at a lower elevation were treated as flat or just simply one observation point. Um, I still want to really, I almost want to 
go out on some ground and see how this works. But anyways, for now, I'm going to treat it as... For now, I'm going to treat it as these, these lower hexes. These two lower hexes that are on the, the line of sight here are, are, are low, and so they're not... They're treated as basically no effect. A one observation point cost is in effect no effect because you can, is in effect no effect because you can't get any lower than one per hex. Okay, so let's start with well. Let's look at the, the conditions of the observer. He's not currently moving and he's not marked PM. He's not winded. He's not in down posture. He's not in full cover and he's not in an in an improved position. So this. So for observer purposes, we just start with standard uh, uh, costs for observation. So the clear hexes are two. The two intervening are going to be treated as flat or one. So it's two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, which leaves eight points for, for the hex that the enemy is occupying. Eight. He has eight observation points. So can he see three... Yeah. Um, so can he see uh, three Red Force soldiers in the wood line here who are down and hugging the ground? Now I would doubt it. So again, I think that he's he should not see them. This is 200 meters away or so. What is this? A hundred? This is 200 meters away. I don't I don't think he should. So let's see how the let's see how the rules work out here. Woods is starts at 12. Observation point cost target. Now we go through the target list of conditions. Target is a vehicle. No, they're personnel, obviously. Target is marked PM. They're not marked PM anymore. Target is in up posture. No, they're in down posture. They're in improved position. No, they are FC. They are full cover. And then there's a size modifier, which doesn't apply to us because we're only three soldiers here. So what does FC do to the cost of the, it triples the cost. So yeah, Woods 12 triple to 36 is way over. So in this case, Blue would not see them. Now let's go in reverse order to see how this works out. Um, I'll take my one and set it aside. Let's go like this. What happens if we just take them out of full cover? Now what is? Well, it's 12, so it's still, he would still not see them. Now if he goes up, um, yep, now the 12 observation point cost for Woods is halved because he's in an up posture. So basically, hugging the ground down, he's not seen. Down but not hugging the ground, he's not seen. And the moment they go to an up posture, they become visible to the heavy machine gun team. That's all. That all works for me. That all. That all feels right. That I'm trying to avoid that the big F word, right? Um, that sounds doable. <laughs> all right. So, um, and incidentally, even if they were down. If they fired, they would be marked with some period marker, right? The fact that they're marked with a period marker also has the... So even though they're down, they would become visible because you have the observation point cost just for being marked PM, i.e. you're doing something. You're moving around, you're firing, you're something. And so they would also become visible, and I'm good with that. Okay, so put everything back. They are down. They are in full cover. They are not visible, and that's uh, and that's that. So blue doesn't have anything. So we come back to red. Red can do something. First thing red is going to do. Red can come out of full cover because we determined. Yes, we did. We determined that he's still not visible. He's going to come out of full cover. He's, I mean, red is attacking here. They don't need to be 
under full cover if they don't need to be. And coming out of full cover is free. It doesn't cost an action point. And because it doesn't cost an action point, it's also not a it's not a trigger. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a trigger. Okay. Um Oh yeah. This is what they're gonna do. They're going to um Again, nothing has to be. I'm still going for nothing has to be declared. So when the red four player simply moves his unit here and would also say two, um, although frankly, I think it's pretty obvious that it's two. I don't see how it could not obviously be two because moving into the clear hex costs one. Um, move to movement. Um, yeah. Uh, moving into the clear hex is one. Moving in down posture costs double the cost of train, so it's two instead of one. This is in effect crawling, but it's I'm not going to. I don't want to refer to it as crawling because it's not just crawling. It could be, you know, very short, low um, darts forward, whatever, high crawl, whatever combination of all different sorts of things but it's moving in down posture cost twice the movement cost of the train so and now because he went down um, just real quickly the blue four does not see them and the reason why when you draw lines for line of sight for both of them the basically this terrain is too high so this terrain is not closer to the observers. It's closer to the observed. Sorry. So if this hex, if this elevation were back here or here or even here, it would not block. But the fact that it's not closer to the blue four units means that this elevation blocks this dead space beyond here. So basically, the red four unit advanced in down posture down the contour into the dead space from the perspective of the blue four units there. Okay, so that's two and then they're going to go um, four. Uh, four, yeah. So they move four. Um, hmm. I wonder if, you, you know, I never considered this. I wonder if units Moving in down posture can use, you know, can can expend more. I don't think that they can. Um, hmm. Or maybe they can. Huh. You know, I haven't decided that. It looks like I made a notation, though, to indicate that I am going to allow, allow them to both trot and run in down posture, even though that sounds um, contradictory. Huh. I haven't thought about that yet. But in any case, they're going to stop there, and they're marked as expending 4 AP. Now, to do that, we look at... Man... I wanted no external play aids, but uh, in any case, it's the third period of the second. I can also explain it. It's the third period of the second cycle. If I count forward four, one, two, three, four, if I count forward four periods, obviously, if there are four periods to a cycle, I simply loop back around, or is it, I loop forward around to, wait, ah, anyways four action periods forwards is the same third action period of the next cycle. So I'm marked with that marker that corresponds to that action period. Like that. And uh, red four is done. Um, I need to remember to use the friction markers to show them. <laughs> uh. This is one thing that uh, 
I wonder how this game will actually play when players are aggressively using the friction markers. All right, so that is the end of the um, it's the end of the period. Uh, yeah, period. Um, back to the top. Um, there is no uh, understand that this is there is no general cleanup phase at all, uh, which I really like, but. Uh, you're cleaning up as you go at the start of each action period. So we'll, we'll do that now. So we, we advance to the fourth period of the second cycle. Basically, we're ending the second minute of this contact, which, by the way, I wanted to figure out in real world terms. I think that um, I think Red Force started about there. So in two minutes, Let's take this unit that clearly, they're winded, so clearly they were at least trotting. And in two minutes, see, they covered about 200 meters in two minutes or so. That, no, actually that is about right. And that is, well, again, that's very reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, so uh, first thing we do, both players remove the action. Um, oops, here I am doing the wrong thing. Actually, there's nothing going on. It's not that there can't be anything going on. Uh, here I am removing the wrong, I'm supposed to be removing the light, the light lime green. There aren't any, there aren't any action markers to remove either, or friction markers, sorry. So we go right to the action phase. We start with the red four player. I mean, every unit is engaged at this point um, in something. So red player passes. Now blue player could do something with his two units. Can't see any red four forces, but could move, could do something. But in this situation, they're not, they're not going to. Um, yeah, I still want to work on ranged fire and not uh, not going to work through close combat yet. Okay. Again, I mean, okay. So uh, blue player would pass. We have two passes in a row. Now I just want to say that uh, two passes in a row is not without its costs. Uh, I just haven't worked it all the way through, but there's going to be. It's not, gonna, it's not that there's going to be a penalty exactly, but a no action. It's it's not two passes. Two passes in a row is one thing. This was a no action action period, right? Um, not only was there a double pass. Uh, actually, that's not even relevant. What's relevant is that double pass and no action um, yeah anyways I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do that but uh, okay so now now we are at the start of the third cycle the third minute um, red four player now we remove the at the um, period markers corresponding to the current uh, period action period those are the gray ones so we remove those um, and now red four acts first um, let's get some well no I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go for some gratuitous uh, I'm not gonna go for some gratuitous action here yet um, I haven't decided, well, so red four is going to, this unit is going to have them go down posture for one, one action point. And then they're going to go up the contour line in the forest like that for two. So they've expended, oh wait, I'm sorry, that's, never mind, that is more than that. The fact is they are in, it's not, it's not, not allowed, but, um, one uh, action point to go down, down posture, and then they are going to move up the contour through the through the woods. 
the woods is normally two doubled for advancing. Here we go, advancing in down posture. So they've expended five. That means that they um, had. That means that they are winded. So they're marked. I don't know what order. Well, actually, the order. Actually, the order does matter, doesn't it? Ooh, the order. Huh. Well, through play testing, I'll have to figure out how how tight I need to use this ordering or not. But in any case, they've now expended five, which means that they are marked plus four p.m. plus four p.m. and uh, and winded. So let's see what that does. First things first is the machine gun right here. Is, let's see if the machine gun can even observe them. So they're they're down and they're moving in the wood line 100 meters away, less than 100 meters away. Let's see what the, the rules say now first. So again, this is, um, he has no modifiers to him for his situation, so it's two, four, six for the intervening um, clear hexes. That leaves 14 observation points to see the units in there. So let's go through. We start with 12 for the woods. The target is a vehicle. No, it's marked PM. It is marked PM because it is moving. So once the unit starts acting, it is in effect marked PM as it goes, but you don't have to you know, change each marker as you go for each action point or half of an action point suspended. But they are marked PM. So right away we have the observation point cost to six. And then up posture, no, they're down. Improved position, no. FC, no. And size is not a matter. So it's halved. So right there, it is um, six, right? 12 halved for basically PM, which means have because they're doing something, they're moving, and so the heavy machine gun spots them, observes them, sorry, spot is the wrong word. The heavy machine gun observes them in that hex. Now, um, let me make sure I have this in, in my <laughs> sequence of play at this point. So this is reaction fire, not mandatory, but the blue four heavy machine gun is going to um, use reaction fire. So a reacting player, that's blue for it right now, uh, unit may reaction fire against any AP, any action point expenditure by an active unit within observation. So within observation, the, the heavy machine gun unit saw the red four unit expend four action points in that wooded hex. They didn't observe the going down, the down posture down here, but they did observe them advancing and down posture here in this hex. Okay, so if the reacting unit is already marked PM, though it's not marked PM, he would be limited to a one rate of fire attack. So the blue four player has the choice. Well, let's see what this. If the unit is not marked PM, then it may conduct a rate of fire attack less than or equal to the number of action points expended by the acting unit in its current hex and the unit is marked PM as appropriate. So, yes. The red four unit expended four action points in this hex. Therefore, the blue four player heavy machine gun can choose a rate of fire attack, rate of fire attack up to or equal to four, which is the, the max. So. The blue four player can choose how much to open up uh, against that unit. Uh, no, that's, yep, okay. It's not, not too egregious. Um, oh. Huh. Huh. You know, I don't think that. 
that doesn't matter anymore. That doesn't matter anymore because all fire attacks at this point are 1 p.m. actions. This is a, a rule left over from an earlier model that's been changed. You know, I'm, I'm taking this out immediately and uh, set it aside in the notes section because I don't think it applies anymore. Now let's start over. The reacting unit is already marked PM. It's not marked PM, so it, is, it can choose any rate of fire attack, and it's not limited according to the number of AP. The the penalty. No, it's not a penalty. Man, I won't, I won't even discuss that. No, I think the blue four can open up with any rate of fire it wants. Reason is, is because it's going to be marked with the same PM as the target unit, anyways. So in effect, it's going to be marked with a plus four. It's going to be marked with a plus four action uh, or period marker, anyways, which is already a penalty. It's interesting in this. Um, this little situation. Let's see what happens when the heavy machine gun opens up with a max fire attack, just blaze away with a full rate of fire. I think that would actually be a very bad choice in this situation, but um, let's see how the rules actually play out. Okay, the reacting unit conducts area point fire as normal. The reacting unit's action counts as a player's action Oh, so he still needs to be marked. Um, reacting unit conducts area point fire as normal and is marked. And is marked PM as appropriate. Meaning in this case, he will have the plus four PM of the target unit. I'll try to explain what's going on here when I'm all done with this attack. So this is an area attack. So let's go up and see how I'm doing here. Unit um, may move, unit may conduct a task, unit may conduct area fire at an area target or point target if capable. This is area fire against an area target. Of course, oh, oh. I was thinking about this the other day. Machine guns cannot. Machine guns cannot use point fire. Um, so yeah. Um, or if machine guns use point fire, is it only Reduced firepower, and I might, well, I'll jot that down, or reduced firepower for the, for crew, although I'm inclined to not go with that. Anyways, so it's area fire against uh, an area target. Um, okay, identify target hex, obviously it's this one. Identify fire, the, the heavy machine gun there. Um, check line of sight. Line of sight is good. Um, uh, check observation. We already did that. Uh, we know that he can observe the unit there. Um, check field of field of fire is open. Um, it's one hundred percent field of fire. Um, check ammo status. Yep. Uh, heavy machine gun is not low ammo yet. Um, okay, check, okay, check. Uh, calculate firepower based on number of fires and rate of fire. Round to the nearest CRT column, marked with corresponding CF. Okay, so now we go to our unit tables and we look for the um, heavy machine gun. It is still at a crew of three. It hasn't taken any losses. So it's a crew of three with um, 
So crew of three, expending four rate of fire, firing at rate of fire, at four rate of fire, firing at four rate of fire, at a range of one, two, three, four. That is 15. 15. Fifteen. Now we round the column. Fifteen is between fourteen and twenty, closer to the four, fourteen, so it's fourteen. Go like that. So, oh wait, what did we say was the effect of winded? Um, what is the effect of winded? Um, winded, winded, winded. I thought I jotted down something. Or is it just the, the winded units have a harder time observing? So it's kind of a, well, actually, it kind of, why would there be any change to a unit firing against? No, yeah, well, I'll go with it for now. All right, so we pick up again our. Rounded and market. Um, okay, now we check for low ammo status and uh, check for low ammo status because um, we we said everybody in this in this situation is at medium combat load. So we look and we see there's a nine percent chance base percent chance times four thirty six uh, thirty six. 48 so did not roll for low ammo so and then they're marked oh well let me pick up my sure it's actually so all we did was check the low ammo we're good um, both fire and target are marked at least plus 1 p.m. if not already okay so mark the target so now we mark the target according to the AP expended that's where we have the 4 plus 4 p.m and winded because he expended more than four and he's got his cf marker and the fire is marked with the same uh, i say it <clears throat> at least equal to current target pm mark fire pm as appropriate at least equal to current target pm hmm hmm not sure about my wording there but anyways that is it that is blue so blue opened fire with a max fire attack did not go low ammo and uh, that's it I would go back to red red let's say is going to pass oh Um, let's say blue passes too. All right, so we go to the second period, third cycle. Um, we remove all the blue marker, blue period markers. There are none. Um, let's. Wow, it kind of happens this way. We're kind of fast forwarding now. Pass, pass. Go to the next. The third period, we remove the lime green markers here. Like that red, um, well red can definitely. Uh, <clears throat> let's let's. Well, first of all, he's going up for zero. That means quick up, not a tactical up. Um, Let's go one half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, down like that. Um, so three and a half AP expended round. Do I have rounding up? 
Um, player, where is it? Unit may move. Only units which begin the current AP, not marked PM, may move. Move unit hex by hex, blah, blah, blah. Unit, a moving unit may not enter. Oh. Before, I had a big period of review deciding whether units can enter a CF hex or not. And now I can't remember what my... Now I can't remember which way I was going with that. <laughs> um, hmm. This doesn't sound right though. Yeah, I'll we'll leave that for now. Um, okay. The player counts the number of AP head on the period track equal to the number of AP expended round normally. So it would be rounded to four. So again, that loops around to the next lime green or third period of the next cycle. That, and that's that. Uh, fourth period, nothing. And now we go to the, now we're starting the fourth cycle, first period. First we remove markers like that. This is the period we're in, that we're starting. So you remove the markers that correspond to the period you're, you're just starting, you're getting into. Easy way to remember that. Um, now when you're done, so far, I haven't added any, you know, obviously things could change down the road. As of now, any unit that's not marked with a PM can act. Units that are not marked with PM can react, and even units that are marked with PM can also react. Um, okay, so let's resolve this one. Let's see what happens here. Oh, the, oh, the winded marker. I wrote, I jotted this down. Um, top winded markers are removed with the corresponding PM. So when the PM came off of here. Oh, I was going to explain this, darn, and I'm going to go back and explain it. All right, this would come off at the same time as the PM came out. Okay, let me back up just a bit. This one was marked uh, first PM, and when and when the machine gun fired on him, the machine gun picked up the same first PM marker. Now, this is the thinking here. The red unit red four unit was down here in the woods and they used advancing and in, in down posture movement to move to this hex and, it, and in the process they expended well actually five uh, action points but it's still considered f expending five action points in a four action period of time um, so it's exertion beyond the normal for a minute. Um, when, the, when the heavy machine gun fires on the unit, that was reaction fire. You know, I'm not even sure that even matters. Okay. It was reaction fire, but I'm not even sure that matters. So, the machine gun picks up the same action period marker as the target, meaning, because this, this was four action periods, so to speak, in the future. Which means that towards the end of the minute, the heavy machine gun would have opened up and it would have opened up with max fire. Right? So the question is, what was the machine gun doing in the first 45 seconds? I probably should. Hmm. Well, in any case, it was doing various things. But the mach heavy machine gun is not locked into this because remember, if a if another target presents itself, the heavy machine gun can still fire. That's with the the one rate of fire attack. So. There's more action within the time period represented by the markers on 
the fire in that case. Well, that wasn't as clear as I thought it was going to be, but again, it's working out well enough. <clears throat> Yeah, okay. All right. Here goes. Now we try to resolve. Now red four player tries to resolve his CF there. CF hex. Um, oh, let's see what... Did I go over the rules? I think I did. Um, okay, roll... 54. This is going to be more. Ooh, this is going to be balanced. Uh, uh, this is going to be something, I think. This is going to be closer to some careful resolution here. So, uh, roll and dice. If resolving, this is area of fire. Check unit. Okay, so um, back to 111. I think. Yeah, we already talked about 111, right? I think 111 was the 35, right? Oh, whoops. I was thinking of 111 it talked about, but that's minus 1, too. Oh, he's 35% too. Okay, so he failed his reaction to fire check there. So we're going to go up one, ooh, up one column. So 14 goes up to the next column. Um, cover is not going to help because the woods is only going to be... No, I actually have to go through this and slow down and go through each step. So, first of all, um, so now we're, now we're on the 20 column. Ooh, 20 column. Um, the cover for the woods is 20, but he's in down posture, which means it's times two the percent cover, which is 40% cover, but that's still not, 40 or less would negate this attack. This is 54. So cover is not, cover does not help. Um, mark casually. So yeah, we check. So we go to the CRT and we see what is 54 at column 20 is two, two casualties. And that's it. Cover didn't help. Um, I think that's it. So, two, oh wow, unit, unit is eliminated. Huh. Wow. <laughs> didn't even. Now, what were the percentages that would cause, in this case, down? posture, which is good, in woods, which is good, but they did fail their skill test. Let's say if they had not failed their skill test, if they had rolled 35 or less and passed their skill test, then what rolls would have produced? I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at a 20% chance of two casualties and 20% chance of one casualty. Now they failed their skill test, so it's bumped, it bumps up, and now I'm looking at there's a 10% chance of three casualties, 10% chance of two casualties, and 30% chance of one casualty. So, well, 100 meters away, that's. Again, that's not outrageous. So. So to wipe the unit out, there's only a 20% chance of that happening. Because that's 10% chance for three casualties and 10% chance for two casualties. Yeah. Now, I think these are the way I have these woods defined. They're, well, they're definitely not heavy woods. They're kind of light woods, actually. So the cover value for the woods could be could be a lot higher. There will be variability, but these ones are. I'm thinking of these as fairly light woods. 
Hmm. Okay, so did I miss anything? At the end of the routine, you... Uh, yeah. Gone. Huh. Interesting. See, now I'm not... I'm not sure red four can even take take uh, blue four out now. And I don't think red four began with enough, enough firepower, actually. Um, so I'm not I'm not really thrown off by this playtest example. I think things worked out well, at least they're back on track. I think I like what I'm seeing again. I mean, there's a lot of open ground here. What's red red gonna do? Need to get to smoke and indirect fire and stuff. Um, otherwise, yeah. Hmm. Yep. I think I've covered enough for now, made enough progress for now. So, until next time.